All right, so we've got like a 9.6 pH and a negative uh, 795. Looks like it went up to 9.7 pH. All right, so we're going to simulate um, adding, I believe I added three drops to the other one, so I'll add three do drops to this one. One, two, three. And just see what happens when those drops are added. Now, actually the pH raised, I guess it wasn't settled down and enough. But it, whoa. So after I guess the drops are mixing in and effect, yeah, I could definitely see an effect on the ORP, but the, the pH, it's interesting, is being more sluggish. I think what probably happened is I um, should have waited just another minute before reading that pH. It was probably a little higher and, and I just didn't let it wait long enough. All right, so now the pH is dropping. And I, I, I will assume that if I drank that water, it's been about a minute, if I drank that water and it's in the stomach now, getting absorbed into the bloodstream, at, it that that would be a very nice, ORP, but the um, pH might be a little on the high side for that. Uh, what would probably happen is um, because of the high pH it would not allow, my guess is the stomach would not allow it or the blood would not accept it because it, it would wait until the pH was neutralized more. It would probably just pass into the duodenum. You know, a lot of the digestive system theories are theories rather than facts because it's really difficult to, to know 100% what is happening inside each living organ. This is a living organism having these living things happen and it, it just is, you know, you're, you can see evidences of things but you know, it's all going to be theory until you've, you know, <laughs> I don't know how you'd, you'd uh, know 100% sure, for sure. Um, so if, even if the person was dead and you dissected their stomach, they've still been dead for so long before that happened and they're not living anymore, so you're, you're not going to, you, you can conjecture, but you you're not going to know 100%. But my conjecture, or my theory is, the blood would not accept this. That's too high pH. It would, it would be, this would be great water to go into the duodenum though, because that's the exact pH that the duodenum wants to be. It, it actually wants to be an 8.8 .8 pH. All right, so anyway, that's, um, that's level three. And level three water is what I drink, and I've I've been very, very happy with it, so um, I would encourage anybody to work their way up to level three. So let me wash this these probes off and then stick them in that level two water and so this is one is water at level two. Looks like a 9.5 pH so far, but I'm going to let it settle down more this time. So, you know, one thing, while it's settling down, I suppose I could talk about this chart a tiny bit. Um, when the once the once the water goes through the um, 
duodenum, which is the top of the small intestine, it, it, it then goes into the rest of the small intestine here. Now, it is highly, highly, highly important to maintain a good alkaline pH in this section of the intestine because without a good alkaline pH, you might have harboring of, bec of uh, parasites, uh, fungus, and things like that. So you definitely want to have a nice, healthy pH in the entire intestine. If the only organ that requires this low acid is the stomach. The rest of it all requires alkaline. Um, even in this lower intestine, it's, it's still slightly alkaline, a little bit less than the small intestine, but it's still, you know, to be healthy, needs a, a certain amount of alkalinity. So anyway, let's, while I've done that, <laughs> we've kind of bought us a little time here and we'll see what this level two is. Now this is St. Louis water and I should say that our tap water probably is about a 10 pH. Um, so that's, that's why level two is, is coming up like this. And the negative 734 is um, is very good ORP for that. For that, so I'm going to go ahead and drop three drops of our simulated hydrochloric acid here, and see what happens. <laughs> 